everybody. How's it going? Happy Wednesday night. It's um, Wednesday night live uh, at seven. I'm so excited you're here. Um, I have been posting these on YouTube and so I just want everybody to know that I'm doing that. Uh, really happy to have you here. Tomorrow we leave. Hey Sarah, tomorrow we leave for on stage. So what is on stage? On stage is Stampin' Up's um, convention, our conference that we have every six months, and Sarah's actually going to be coming with us tomorrow. I have four people from my team coming, um, Patsy Palmer, my mother-in-law, Sarah Cuomo, uh, Jill Moyer, and Terry Lynn Bouquet. And so I have four people from my team coming, so five of us, we're going to stay in a condo, and I'm really excited. Thanks, Jill, for helping us with that. Um, so we're like carpooling and meeting up tomorrow, and then we're all flying in, and Terry's going to meet us there from St. Louis and it's going to be awesome. So the event doesn't actually happen until Saturday, but Friday night there is a event called Center Stage and Center Stage is for um, Stampin' Up! leaders who are at Silver Elite and above. And thanks to my wonderful teammates and my awesome customers, I was able to maintain my Silver Elite status. Um, Silver Elite is um, a wonderful opportunity to be part of the leadership, to um, help direct and guide things, give feedback to Stampin' Up! Um, and also we're privy to extra information before our um, teammates get it, so that's nice. I think that's a perk. And then it's um, on stage. They've done this center stage, um, a leadership dinner for us, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, they're going to bring back leadership events, which will be exciting. Um, that'll be next August, but for now, um, Hey Patricia, um, center stage is a wonderful opportunity. So we're all flying in tomorrow night and then Friday we're going to hang out and have some fun. I've got center stage leadership dinner along with several of my sidelines, my upline and some other really great Stampin' friends that I've made along the way. And then all day Saturday, we'll be stamping and crafting and learning. We get to see the new spring catalog. Um, and if the rules are the same, which I think they are, we can share live as it happens. We can show you pictures of stamp sets and stuff that we're playing with. Um, so I will be doing that. So make sure that you stay tuned here on the Facebook page. Um, and I will definitely be in here or Instagram sharing things as they happen. I'm really excited. We've seen some sneak peeks at poppies and pineapples and um, lots of really fun spring um, catalog products. So I'm really excited. Then we get to see Celebration early and we get to order from all of it early, which is a really nice perk to attending on stage. So yeah, so what I'm working on right now is on stage swaps. Um, I tend to swap stuff that I've made. Like I tend to, the first couple of on stages I went to, or, you know, conventions, when they were called convention, I would make hundreds. Um, and I just don't have the time to do that anymore. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I was always told, bring as many swaps as you want to get swaps back. So if you want 10 swaps, bring 10. If you want 50, bring 50. Um, I decided to sponsor a fun fold or fancy fold swap, um, this year because I thought it would be fun to get some more fun folds. Fancy folds are my downfall. Like there's something that I don't do enough of and I definitely, um, have to see them before I can understand how they go together. Um, so for instance, this is one that we'll be doing in my nature's beauty class. So this was a swap that I got. And I love it because it looks just like a regular card, except, whoosh, look at that, isn't that cool? So this is one that we'll be doing in the Nature's Beauty class, and I'm really excited. So Nature's Beauty class is going to feature the um, Twall Tidings paper and the Nature's Beauty stamp set. Um, I think I priced it. It's 35. 20% um, of the profits um, will go to um, NAMI Central Texas Mental Health. Um, and then remember $3 from Stampin' Up! of every stamp set goes to the NAMI um, National Office. So Nature's Beauty class um, I'm hosting. It's a to-go class. Um, I'll provide PDF directions. You'll actually get the stamp set yourself so that you, you don't have to buy the stamp set. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited. So details in my newsletter, or if you're interested, you can just message here and I can PayPal you the link 
or if you um, want to um, email me, message me, I don't know, send a carrier pigeon, whatever, and then I can send you the link for that. I'm going to do the Nature's Beauty through, I think, the end of the month, um, and I set a date. I need to look back and make sure I've got the right date, but if you're interested in this class, let me know. So, my fun fold is this. Yay! So I love these cards. This is one of my favorite folds. Um, partly I like it because it doesn't take a lot of card stock. So it's one piece that's four by seven, and then you score it at one, two, five, and six to make this part, right? And then this strip is just five by one. And then this one, I'm hoping you can see it, but we'll see. I don't know if the light's good enough. Yeah, so what I did is I added the new shimmery crystal effects to these cute little punched hearts that I did with the dog punch and popped it up on a dimensional. So there's some heat embossing and then there's this beautiful paper from Christmas Rose, which I'm really excited about. But tonight I wanted to experiment a little and I realize it's always brave of me to experiment live with you, but you know, What's life if not a giant experiment, right? So I think I might want to do it with this one. Okay, let's do this one. All right, so we're going to stamp the big rose and we're going to color it in. Um, and the colors that go with this set are like Mossy Meadow and Real Red. And so we're going to get those two out and we're going we're gonna to do it. So you ready? All right, here we go. Flipping you down. Okay, so this is our Fluid 100 paper, um, and this paper is beautiful. I love it. Um, it is a nice weight watercolor paper that is um, super. It's super usable because it doesn't have too much texture. Our old watercolor paper, in my opinion, had a lot of texture. Um, so we're just getting some painter's tape. This is a big roll of painter's tape. I've been using it for crafting for quite some time, and um, I don't feel like I've made a dent in it. You'll notice I'm putting it on my shirt. That's to pick up a little bit of lint to make it not so sticky on the paper. I just want to hold the paper down so it doesn't buckle. And generally with our, our watercolor paper, it's not going to buckle anyway just because it's um, so heavy. But it's, it's always a nice idea to like go ahead and, you know, lay it down and make sure it doesn't happen. And then the other thing I'm trying to find is my embossing buddy. Uh-oh. I don't see him. Oh, here he is. Okay. So, an embossing buddy. So the embossing buddy is a great idea when you're embossing, your heat embossing. Um, I don't use it when I'm doing like this kind of heat embossing. Um, I generally only use it when I'm doing watercolor paper heat embossing, and that's because the watercolor paper picks up a lot of stray stuff. Um, so I just find that I get a much better image. So what we're going to use, the Christmas Rose stamp set has two pieces. This is a very unique stamp set. So it has the Christmas Rose that's the distinctive and it's photopolymer. So these are distinctive images, right? You know, distinctive is where we stamp and we get multiple. It looks like we did two or three step stamping, but we've only done it once, which is kind of cool. And it has really nice sentiments. And then the other one is a red rubber. So this is a dual set for one price, and this one's red rubber. And so I'm really excited about this one because I like the open line work. So I'm gonna get a block. Hey, I'm taping a video, okay? Yeah. All right. So here we go. We're gonna do some of this on here. So normally I would do this probably ahead of time. I would do this live with you and I would have it all pre-done, but you know, I'm just going for it. We're going to see what happens. All right. So with the watercolor paper, you know, and with the Versamark, you want to make sure that you got a nice image and you have no idea if you did or not really. You got to hold it up to the light. Um, and then, hey, and then... This is the Shimmer White Stamping Embossed Stuff, which is 
glittery, as you can see. I know, my daughter just like had a cow in front of me. She's like, what? So I don't really mess with glitter. This is not my jam. Oh God, yeah, not my jam. Have I mentioned I don't like glitter? Oh yeah, that just made a big mess. Nice, all right. I'm channeling my inner crafter right now for this, y'all, because this is not, not my favorite thing. I could have done just regular clear embossing powder with this, totally, and it would have been cleaner, easier, and would not have made such a big mess, but I want to use it for a Christmas card, and so I kind of felt like it needed a little something. Now, I will say that, I mean, this stuff is really pretty. So now you can see, I'm gonna make sure there are no comments. Hi, Anne. All right, so you can see the shimmer for sure. Now, let's put some heat on it. to test this is to take your brush and just run over it and see I think we've done a pretty good job so is this is definitely a tougher one to tell if you have um, like it's tougher to tell when it turns which is challenging so um, okay so we're gonna go ahead and get the rose and then I see I think there's some pine cones in this image so when you're doing an emboss resist um, water coloring, you have to have the image next to you when you're doing it because you have to see where you're going, especially if you're using truly clear. With the shimmery clear, you can actually see where you're going, so it's actually a little bit easier. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get our stamp pad and we're going to smush it together like you feel like you're breaking it. And that's going to get you some nice color up there. And I see that we have, there's a rose up here. And I'm looking at my image on here. And then there's a rose, there's the main rose. So I'm going to drop some water in the, in the well here. And I'm going to kind of see what happens. All right, so I want like some darker pieces. And then I want, so the, the best thing about watercolor and about the emboss resist is that you've got these wells that kind of capture the, um, the color. And so what's nice is that you can be pretty painterly with what you do and they're going to capture the color pretty well. So... All right, so now that I'm painting this, I'm remembering that I think the colors in this are not real red. I think they're Poppy Parade and Cherry Cobbler. But when we're watercoloring, it's okay. Um, and I think I'll come back in and I'll do, I might do, oh yeah, that's pretty. So, so I'm picking up and I'm trying to like, you know, get the edges 
so that maybe I can like drop a little bit of darkness in, right? I'm trying to put some of the darker color kind of down in the bottom so that maybe the light hits the top. All right, that looks nice. I'm okay with that. So one of the things that I've learned over the years is that you can definitely overwork watercolor. And so you have to be very, very careful that you don't do too much. Um, so it's really tempting and really easy to, um, you know, lay down too much color and not, um, and then make it look really ugly. And we don't want that for sure. All right, so we've got some leaves here and I'm gonna make sure to try to avoid the berries that might be really difficult down in here, but we'll see what we can do. So there's definitely a couple of berries right there. All right, and then over on this side, there's another leaf. Again, I'm trying to avoid the berries, but I might not do a good job. And that is kind of the beauty of this, is that they can't see what the original picture's like, so, you know. Nice, I like that color variation that I'm getting there. I'm gonna add a little bit more dark um, along one side of this leaf and see if I can't get that to puddle. And there's another leaf over here All right, now there's a lot of pine bells, and there's definitely a pine cone. Like there's one here, there's one there, and there's one there. But those are really hard to see. All right, so I think I'd like to kind of touch this with some color for the pine, and then I'm gonna like touch this with some color for this pine. And then there's a little bit of pine around this. There's a little bit of pine right there. And there's a little bit of pine right there. Okay, so I'm just kind of touching those lightly. I like all the color variation. That looks nice. Okay, now I think I'm gonna do cherry cobbler for the berries, and I'm gonna do early espresso for the pine cone. The reason I'm doing early espresso for the pine cone is because it's gonna come out lighter than I want, and so I think, yeah. So early espresso makes sense. I'm hoping we get something that looks like a pine cone here. We'll have to see. Yeah. Pine coney that looks, but all right. Yeah, there we go. All right, and then if it's too puddly, which it might be, yeah, I can always come in with my tissue. And a patient watercolor person would wait and let things dry before coming in. I'm not patient, so. Okay, this is definitely more impressionistic than, you know, real life, but that's okay. No big deal. All right, that will dry. And then some berries, and I think we'll be good. All right, let's see what these berries turn out like. All right, and these are our aqua painters, which you hopefully know about our aqua painters. Oh, this aqua painter was acting funny the other day. I see glitter all over my workstation, y'all. Okay, all right, so now the berries are definitely going to be fun to try to color in. So here's hoping that, there we go. So you can put your heat tool on this. If it's too moist, it will 
move everything around, which you might not want. Um, so you have to be kind of careful that it's dried a little bit before you, um, you know, add a bunch of heat to it. Okay, that looks pretty good. There's definitely some berries over here. I liked using the cherry cobbler for these berries. Definitely some berries there. That's good. All right, so we see some berries here. Good. We have some berries here. I think there's one right there. Good. Some berries there, some berries there. Excellent. And some berries there, and some berries there. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's see what happens. And then I like to make sure to clean my brush out on a tissue or a paper towel or something until the color that's coming out is no longer colored. So, you know, squeezing it out and making sure that you've got all that color out of there, um, you know, um, so that nothing, you know, you don't cross taint anything later, which is great. All right, so let's see about I don't feel like that early espresso is dark enough for those acorns, though. Let's see what we can do here. All right, let's get some more. All right. Okay, cool. Let's see. Let's see what happens. And... So what you'll see is because I didn't wait between the sections, um, you might see, let's get this over, you might see that there's like a brown spot there and a brown spot there. And that's because I didn't wait before the sections dried to do this. And that was because I'm impatient. That was a bad student move. So I'm going to make sure my brush is clean. And I'm gonna see if I can add a little bit more of the real red into this section. And maybe I'll be able to cover that up. I might not be able to, though. Um, the other thing is, is I kinda wanna, I don't want it all to be one color of light pink. You know, I wanna have some some darkness to some sections of it and so I feel like we need to kind of bring in a little bit more color over here all right so that will help so kind of the lights like here right we've got a little bit of shadow there and then I think I'm gonna bring some shadow I feel like that top one needs a little bit more shadow. Okay, cool. Awesome. So then, the neat thing is, is that this, um, and I'm actually in this case because I put so much water in here, I'm going to clear this out a little bit. That was really messy. So, the nice thing is, is that this stamp set has a die that goes with it, and the die perfectly fits this image. The other neat thing is that let's say you don't feel like doing any of this and you want to go ahead and get the designer series paper. Mm -hmm. 
What's cool is that this die cuts out the images on the designer series paper. So you'll be able to, we, we did the math, you can get 16 of these big roses out of one pack of designer series paper because there's four sheets. But with this, we could come in and we could die cut this and then we can mount it on something, right? And then that's gonna look really, really pretty. So I'm gonna run this through the die machine and I will mount it on something. And I will stamp a little sentiment and I will post a picture down below. Um, so um, don't forget to share this um, if you're liking it and you um, like that what we're doing. Um, if you share, then you're entered into a drawing. And if you comment, you're entered into a drawing. So make sure you throw me up some comments. Let me know you're there. Um, hopefully you, um, you know, think this is an interesting technique and a fun way to use the Christmas Rose stamp set because I think it's really beautiful. Uh, and I think there's lots of ways that you can use the set. Um, this definitely does not have to be Christmas at all. Um, especially, I think this rose um, has a lot of pieces and doesn't even have to be Christmassy. Um, you know, Valentine's, I mean, you can do a lot with this. So I'm super excited about it. I think it's really a beautiful, um, it's a beautiful set. And I wasn't so convinced at first. I thought it looked like Spode China, the China that I, like the Christmas Spode, anyway. So, um, but I love it. So I will post a picture of this card in a little bit. Make sure that you like this post, that you've shared it, that you leave me a comment. Um, I sent last week's winners um, stuff already um, from last week's post. I haven't pulled a winner, but I will do that. And, um, and so by next week, I'll have another round of things. Um, and maybe my prizes next week will be maybe something from on stage. Maybe I'll have some fun things to send you. Um, I'll send a little swag bag from on stage of some fun tidbits and trinkets. So um, maybe some new ribbon or something. So um, let me know um, how I can help you, what else I can do. Um, we are trucking to the holidays. So hopefully you're working on your Christmas cards, um, your, um, you know, um, trying to, you know, decide how you want to spend your holidays and how you can maybe bring crafting to the holidays. I hope you saw December's Paper Pumpkin. It's the, um, I think it's called For Every Occasion. And the um, Paper Pumpkin is going to have 12 full-size cards, which is a really great deal for $22. But it also has a huge stamp set that will work for any occasion. So I'm actually going to host an online stampin' event for Paper Pumpkin over the holidays um, where we'll all get together with our paper pumpkins and stamp and have fun um, and I'll have some prizes and some fun stuff like that. If you're not a subscriber with Paper Pumpkin, I highly recommend you subscribe for this. Um, this event um, will be for my downline and for my subscribers, so you definitely want to be a subscriber. I also wanted to show you the gold glitter dots. These are the enamel dots that come with this Christmas rose set. Y'all, these are Stunning. And these are your free prize this month if you place an order with a hostess code with me. Any size order, you're going to get a package of these. So I'm going to be ordering a lot of these really soon. And then the other beautiful thing with the Christmas Rose is this shimmer ribbon. It's a gold shimmer ribbon. It's a very beautiful ribbon. So I'll use both of these on the finished card so that you can see them if you haven't seen them yet. Um, but I really do like the ribbon. I think it's really usable. Uh, it's a really nice size and it also cuts really really well and it ties nice bows that's always one of my things like can I tie a bow with this I can't get into it but I got to play with someone else's package the other day which is why I know that it's nice I can't get into this package but I'll get into it and I'll make the finished card so I don't keep you on here too long um, but I hope you have a great night for those of you going to on stage I will see you all really soon, okay? Talk to you later. Bye, guys.